hello everyone and welcome to another video so in today's review we're going to be finding out a new entrant it's not actually a new but an updated version of an american version of the seven seater mid-size suv which is this jeep grand cherokee L. But before we move forward, please consider subscribing to my channel by clicking that subscription button and next to that there's a bell icon. Make sure to press that and leave all the notifications on so that way you will never miss any video updates from my channel. So the new Jeep Grand Cherokee L is offered in three different variants in the UAE which is your Altitude, the Limited and the Limited Plus. So the one that I'm reviewing is the Limited Plus which is the top of the line version but I'm going to come to the letter L as well because that's where a bit of change has happened to the the new grand cherokee as well but let me start from the front you get slimmer grill out here in this jeep logo these grills make actually a jeep logo and then the chrome around these grills as well and in the middle there's just normal plastic but this chrome is offered in the limited and the limited plus package there is also this jeep badging out here and there are these sleeker headlights as well now so these headlights are completely led headlight cluster there is also the drl on top and that drl also converts into the turn signal and at the bottom you would notice this normal plastic which has been given and also more plastic grill which is given in the center and on the other side and there are parking sensors in here at the bottom there is a strip of chrome that continues from one end to the other there's also that chrome that continues on this grill and underneath the headlights as well that continues and there are also fog lights which are like a strip which is given out here so these are the led fog lights which are given on this grand cherokee l on the sides you get these plastic arches so that it protects your fender and you get 20 inch alloy rims aluminium alloy rims and not just that these these rims are standard across all the model lineup which is your altitude limit limited and limited plus there's also the grand cherokee badging out here in chrome and at the bottom again normal plastic which is good actually it's quite easier because if you just scruff or have any scratches or anything it's just easier to replace that plastic as well again boxy arch in the back as well which is to protect these fenders and the doors out here and when you come to the side mirror this is a non-power foldable side mirror in this blacked out version and there's a dash of chrome at the bottom as well there's also the led turn signal inside it but it is power adjustable side mirror and there is also the blind spot warning which is also given on this side mirror itself as well and when you come to these doors these are keyless entry doors and not just the front doors but even the rear doors are also the keyless entry doors and there is also a half chrome strip it's not actually a half strip but that chrome strip which continues from the top and goes till the back it circulates from the rear end and it goes on to the other side so it's a continuous chrome strip which has been given there are these bigger windows out here and now comes the l part in the grand cherokee l so this newer version is slightly longer now and if you look at the design as well it's become much more uh, lesser lines and more less boxy and more curvy that way and it looks more like sitting downwards and a little longer as well i don't know if you can notice that but definitely there is like longer doors and also a longer overhang as well and there is also these tail lights that curve onto the side profile and you have these roof rails which are a mixture of black plastic and also a chrome strip again which is only for the limited plus edition now rear is something where there are some more changes which have happened but the major one that you will notice are these tail lights so these tail lights are a mixture of led and halogen the top bit is your led ones and the turns and all is halogen out here and they are also the sleeker version as well which you can immediately notice compared to the previous ones which were a little thicker as well there is also the 4x4 badging in chrome the l in chrome and also the limited edition badging in chrome and also the g badging in chrome as well there is also more chrome strip which is given out here and next to that on either side you would find your fog lights as well then a normal plastic bumper which has been given again it's actually nicer because it's much more easier to replace if you have small scratches or anything and then there's also a cover for your towing hook as well and also a spare wheel which has been mounted at the bottom of the boot floor and when you come to the visibility you will get decent amount of visibility that way but if there are passengers in the third row seat then that visibility is hampered a little bit but the solution to that is there's a camera which has been given and the feed is relayed in your rear view mirror so 
This similar feature was also available in the new Nissan Pathfinder. You can click on the pop-up banner out here and you can watch that. But the feed from the digital feed from this camera is absolutely fantastic. It's crystal clear even at night it's so much bright and very clearly visible and it's also smooth in terms of its frame rates as well and the chrome strip which i was mentioning which continues from the side and goes around the car it's this one is nearly a continuous one there's only a break because of the the boot door as well now when you come to the boot space when the third row of seats are up you can put 487 liters of luggage in the back the boot floor is pretty flat and even there are scruff plates out here so that you don't damage your bumper but there are also more hooks and points given out here to tie your shopping bags and stuff there is also a 12 volt power socket which has been given there is also the lights boot uh, boot lights and also boot lights which are given in the door itself the boot door and there is also more storage which is given at the bottom you can stuff some more storage out here tying points which are given out here and in order to close the boot door the button is given out here on the left side for some reason not, not instead on the door itself now the third row of seat are foldable in a ratio of 50 is to 50 and you just pull this lever and you fold down these seats now when the third row seats are folded you can put 1328 liters of luggage in the back the boot floor itself it's pretty flat and even there are more tying points around and stuff and there's also a boot separator which has been given but i've just removed it and kept it outside but that boot separator is only usable if you fold down the third row seat because otherwise there is no space to put that here it doesn't fit at all so you have to put it in the second row or you just leave it in your garage now the second row seat is also foldable in a ratio of 60 is to 40 so when i fold down just fold one of them there's a lever which is given on the side of the seat now when i fold down the second row of seat you can put 2395 liters of luggage it is easily one of the biggest boot spaces that you get there is another car which has even bigger boot space than this which is the honda pilot so you can click on the pop-up banner out here and you can watch the latest detailed review video of that and find out the boot space with how much boot space there is on that honda pilot as well but on this one it's pretty flat and even so it's just going to be pretty easier to just put your luggage in and out from this grand cherokee l and then after to close your boot door you just press this button so you have to just remember that button is out there and you get this motorized boot door and it easily closes it for you welcome to a completely new interior experience on this jeep grand cherokee l and you probably figured out what's new as well because there's bigger screen out here and lesser buttons i'm gonna come to all of that but let me start with the material quality so you get soft touch materials on the dashboard out here on the door cards but just on the top levels this is where you will find the soft touch materials out here it starts getting a little harder this is completely plastic out here it's plastic even on the door cards it's plastic we're going to be resting hands that's just soft touch there are also mood lights which are given in the door cards out here in the footwell and where these cup holders are there's also this wood trim which has been given now they say this is a, a real wood when i tap on it yeah it's a wood insert which is given on the dashboard out here even on the door cards even for the back and even on the steering that they have given these wood inserts everywhere out here there is glossy plastic which has been given the screen itself is glossy and more glossy out here this cover which can be opened so you can close it as well so if you keep anything you can hide it away as well and there is also more glossy plastic out here now i'm little doubtful about the life of this glossy plastic because eventually it might get scratched for a fact that i can already see a lot of scratches on this glossy plastic as well so yeah maybe change it to something i i don't know but let me start with the driver's display so you get a digital driver's display which is a 10.25 inch colorful display on new grand cherokee l and the buttons are all given on your steering wheel to control that screen but you can even change the look of your screen by pressing the ok button on the left side and then you can change it to just the rev counter and the digital speedometer and then you can see some more information but i like the conventional dials because it looks more nicer but it just feels slightly a little heavily 
uh, loaded with a lot of things and this is why it slows down a little bit and even the graphics can slightly be improved and can be made a little more crispier that's about it but yeah the screen itself has a lot of animations and stuff but there are also menu options in the center which you can customize so you can go to your main menu and then there you will see your digital speedometer and your driver assist then you can go down and then you can see your vehicle info in which you will see your fuel economy your gate summary oil life tire pressure stop start feature and all of that and then you can go down you can see your trip info trip a trip b then there is the off-roading options where you will see your terrain status which mode you are in vehicle dynamics pitch and roll then there is also the media option when you go down then there is the messages if there are any then you can leave it completely blank and you can even go inside and then you can do the screen setup where you can change all the different options which are given on your screen on your left side on your right side the top right corners and everything that you can change from here you can remove the odometer if you want if you don't want to see all of that you can change from here and you can come down then to your main menu again there is also this another button which is given which shows you the options in 3d so you can select that like not 3d actually just it's kind of a spear spherical menu option that you can see the same menu option which you saw can be seen in that format as well but yeah which is why i said it's slightly loaded with a lot of graphics which is why it slows down a little bit plus there are also a lot of buttons to play around to get eventually into that option as well so yeah that's your digital driver's display but you get a lot of information on your screen itself with your lane key passes and everything on the corner and all of that information now when you come to the steering wheel this is a leather covered steering wheel with the white stitching out here and then the wood insert which i mentioned then there is the jeep logo which has been given out here and there are also paddle shifters but those are like the tiny ones which are given and at the bottom there are more buttons which control your media and the sound so that's again continued from the previous generation so those buttons are mounted in the back and on the right side you will find the controls for your adaptive cruise control and also the normal cruise control that you can switch to so all the buttons are given out here whereas on the left side you will find the buttons for your communication and also the infotainment uh, system and the media controls if you want to do that you can do from here and also the driver's display that you can control from here but the buttons are slightly a lot on the steering wheel and you have to maneuver a lot of buttons and sometimes you may not be able to reach these buttons as well because they are that spaced out and also there are buttons in the back so yeah you can get used to that as well and the steering wheel is electronically adjustable which is your tilt and telescopic both so you can find the right position for you when you are driving it but overall yeah the steering is pretty big that way and it's pretty chunky as well now when you come to the air conditioning controls straightforward button operated controls are given and they are mounted like on a flatter surface and they have this black glossy plastic as well but straightforward options are given so you can switch it on and off and you can also see the information on your infotainment screen as well when you are changing the different menu options so you can switch on the fan speed on the center there is a button given for that like a switch and on either side there are more switches for the temperature control so you get tri-zone air conditioning system on this jeep grand cherokee l which is the limited plus edition so there are also dials given on both the sides but those are for your media controls i get confused with the air conditioning dials sometimes because they are placed in that air conditioning panel so yeah which is why maybe i get confused and there are more buttons given at the bottom for the flow of air and air con and everything and not just that you can even change the air conditioning settings individually on your screen infotainment screen where you can change the temperature and then you can switch on the ventilated heated cool seat options and on the passenger side as well the same thing but if you want to change more detailed options you can go inside and then you can have the full setting out here where you can change every single thing from here itself you can even change the rear climate control and everything from this infotainment screen as well so you can switch it on and off and control the flow of air and the temperature so all those things that you can do from here there are also buttons given out here on the air conditioning control panels for your ventilated heated and cooled seat options which are given out here so you can switch them on or the heater option if you want you can just get both these options 
from here as well or from the infotainment screen so that is your air conditioning controls out here which is laid out pretty straightforward now when you come to the infotainment screen you get a 10.1 inch colorful display which is a U connect 5 system on this Grand Cherokee L and to be honest it's it's kind of all right and pretty much all the all your menu options and buttons have now moved into this infotainment screen so it's pretty decently snappy as well so you can add your widgets out here you can even change the the position of your widgets and everything from here so you can do all of that and that is also on your main screen your navigation system and there are also shortcut buttons given at the bottom so the first option is your home button and then you can even customize your page or add your page or reorder your page as I mentioned and there is also the media option in which you will find all your connectivity options so in terms of the connectivity you can connect to this infotainment system using Bluetooth there is also the auxiliary option then there is the USB ports and there are tons of USB ports by the way and there is also wireless Android Auto and Apple CarPlay which is a pretty useful feature because it's wireless so you can just connect pretty much any time without a cable or need or forget and a cable then it's still gonna work as well then there is the icon option out here then there is the navigation feature so you have inbuilt navigation system on this one it's pretty fast in fact I found it faster than the Google Maps when you connect to the Android Auto or Apple CarPlay because this navigation system is powered by TomTom so you get that TomTom navigation system on this one then there is the phone option if you're connected to your Bluetooth or your uh, Android Auto Apple company you can see from here then there is the detailed vehicle options in which you will find your first control option where mirror dimming option and you can even fold down the third row of headrest from here so you can press this button and you probably heard that so you can do that as well and there is also the surround camera option so your 360 degree camera option you can see from here then there is something called as a fam cam option which is like a camera which is mounted in the between the second and the third row on the roof and you can see all the seats out here your second row of seat or you can individually tap on it and you can even see the individual uh, option as well on that individual seat if you've kept anything or if you have passengers on your seat then you can you know keep an eye on th them as well so if you have kids so you can do that as well so yeah I mean it depends on what kind of use you will have for this camera so I'm just saying there is also the forward facing camera as well then there is the rear facing camera and then you can even clean the camera and it will wash the front camera for you then there is the off-roading options in which you will find all your off-roading options like your vehicle dynamics, accessory gauge, pitch roll, select terrain and then the forward facing camera. So in terms of the different driving modes you can change it from here there is like a switch which has been given so you have four different driving modes which is your auto you can leave it in auto there is also the sport there is also the snow all the animation goes on your screen as well and even on your driver's display then there is the sand and the mud mode as well so those are your different driving options then when you come to the settings you will find all your different options like your display profile safety clock all of those options which are given out here then there is the mirror bluetooth voice navigation camera lights every single thing that you can change from here from this detail settings and then the app option in which you can do your favorite apps which will be displayed in the favorite option and there are also a drop down menu option in which you can see your surround camera your temperature notifications fam cam if you want to go to that you can do it from there there's also a shortcut button for that fam cam given on the right side top right corner then there is a bell icon bell icon is also there on my channel you can press that leave all the notifications on. so that way you will never miss any video updates from my channel so that bell icon you can press it out here but this will show you all the notifications from your car so that is pretty much your infotainment screen it's a little confusing initially but once you figure out your way it's decently all right although it can be made faster that's all what i am saying there's also more buttons which are given on top but surprisingly those are the glossy ones uh, which are for your engine start stop feature your lane key passes you can switch it on and off the traction control your parking uh, lights and also the parking sensors if you want to switch them on and off and sometimes it can become a little glossy and then you might not see them properly but yeah they are also mounted on a horizontal plane instead of a little bit on an inclined plane so yeah reading them is going to be a little bit of a task there's also this gear 
shifter knob which has been given now instead of that lever which was there before so you can just yeah just turn it around and put it into reverse neutral or the tri mode and the parking mode and the different driving modes that i mentioned now in terms of the charging you have a ton of usb ports so you have 12 usb ports which are like i think pretty much the first time anyone has given so many ports so you have four usb ports which are given out here which is two type c and two normal usb ports there is also one 12 volt power socket which has been given there is also a wireless charger which has been given out here there is also four more usb ports again two type c two uh, normal usb ports there is also a three pin plug which has been given for the second row of passenger and there are two usb ports which are given on either side in the third row of seat one usb type c and the normal usb port so <laughs> there are so many usb plugs which are given all across so you are never gonna have any charging issues inside this jeep grand cherokee L. Now when you come to the storage you can put about 1 liter worth of bottle in the door cards and some more storage on the sides it tends to miss out a little bit on the storage on the door cards there's also this glove box which is decently big there's this storage which you can use to put your wallets and stuff and then you can close it there is also this two cup holders which are the flexible cup holders which are given and there is also this center armrest which is pretty big which can easily house like your half a liter worth of bottle easily no it doesn't like yeah if you put it in the cross fashion you can put two more cup holders out here then it's a double layer as well so there's a small storage on top and another storage at the bottom there's also this cool bit of jeep logo which has been given out here as well and even in the rear door cards you can put about one liter worth of bottle in both the door cards and there are also two flexible cup holders which are given in the center armrest now on this jeep grand cherokee l you also get the extendable sun visor so it covers your door pretty much entirely so that's one good feature and there is also this digital rear view monitor so that's also pretty sturdy and nicely built there's an also sos feature which has been given which is an emergency feature which has been given on this Grand Cherokee L and you also get a panoramic sunroof on this Grand Cherokee L and it opens pretty big which is what I really like about this panoramic sunroof and it's not like just a gimmicky thing where it just opens a tiny bit and then doesn't. Now on this Grand Cherokee L you get 9 speaker Alpine premium sound system and it sounds incredible now when you come to these seats these are black color leather seats which are perforated seats and they are pretty big and broad and they are decently comfortable as well i really like the comfort levels in here on these seats but yeah they are pretty broad because american standards and they have like decent amount of support at the bottom and also they have good amount of support in the back as well although it could have been a little more but yeah they are much more on the comfort levels which is why they are like like that and the driver side seat is also eight way electronically adjustable and four way lumbar control and also the passenger side seat is eight way electronically adjustable and four way lumbar control as well now in the second row things look pretty spaced out and this is where the extra bit of wheelbase helps out as well because you can see there is a lot of knee room out here and the seats are also curved so that they give you that extra bit of knee room as well and these seats are in my driving position by the way and also there is decent amount of headroom someone about six feet yeah will still be able to fit in here as well these seats again they are the black color leather seats and they are perforated as well but they are heated seats on the second row and not just that the seats offer decent amount of comfort i feel there is decent amount of uh, under thigh support although it just feels the the bottom of the seat is slightly shorter but just that's about it like otherwise why in terms of the seating position it's pretty great and not just that the the backrest is also adjustable so you can recline it for better you know comfort and not just that you can even slide your legs under the seat there is an extra bit of leg room that you will find under the seats as well so overall it's pretty decent there's a bit of a tunnel out here because obviously this is a four by four but it's not that much for to intrude into the the leg space out here so when i sit in the middle row there's the back rest is slightly 
harder which is what i find so yeah the middle passenger is going to be slightly uncomfortable in that sense but nonetheless you can utilize that space as well there is also this hand rest which has been given which houses two flexible cup holders as well and there is also the air conditioning control which is given out here so you can just switch it on and off and you can change the temperature you can change the fan speed and everything there are two vents which are given out here there are two more vents which are given in the pillar as well and also there are two more vents which are given for the third row of passenger i'm going to come to that as well in terms of the quality of material you get plastic to next like slightly softer material out here in the door cards the same wood inserts which are given out here at the bottom there's just normal plastic and there's also a sun visor so if you have kids you can use this shade and utilize that as well or if you want extra bit of privacy you can utilize for that as well in terms of the storage you can put as i said one liter water bottle some more storage on the side and there is also this netted storage which is given in both the driver and the passenger seat now in the third row things are first of all pretty spacious i am surprised by that because it's actually much more roomier than pretty much a lot of mid-size seven seaters that i have tried so this is pretty much the top two i think it's even the top one because you can see there is like a lot of room out here and the second row seat is slideable as well so you get that extra bit of knee room out here the headroom is kind of all right so i'm okay with that and yeah the seats are slightly lower but that's again the seven seater feature the third row is usually quite low down so that it gives you that extra bit of head space but i'm pretty impressed with what you have out here so two people can easily sit here these are again black color leather seats which are perforated seats you have a couple of headrests as well and the camera which i was mentioning you about the fam cam it's this one there are two air conditioning vents on either sides and there's also two normal cup holders which are given on either sides and the usb ports and also the tying hooks which is why when you fold down these seats you can utilize those as well and also getting in and out is kind of all right it's not the biggest space to get in and out but you will be able to manage and also there is a lever which is given out here for easy folding of the second row of seats so you can just press that and you can fold them away and then you can come in and out of the third row of seat quite easily so this 2022 jeep grand cherokee l is powered by the same 3.6 liter v6 engine that produces 293 horsepower and 353 newton meters of torque and this engine is mated to an eight speed automatic transmission while there is also a transfer case which you can lock it from this infotainment screen when you go into the off-roading mode and there is also the four wheel drive which is why the 4x4 so this is a proper 4x4 and not like an all wheel drive which is made to look like a 4x4 but the thing is i'm not allowed to do any off-roading with the car it's just i don't know i'm gonna come to that as well but let me come first to the engine and the gearbox now the engine at lower rpm especially let me just do an acceleration it lacks a little bit of response so So yeah it takes a little while to respond and then it starts rolling but otherwise yeah it's all right there are also gear shifters but those are pretty tiny ones so if you want to try out you can use the eight speed automatic also when i put it in the sport mode yes the engine response increases but it's only after 1500 rpm that it really starts showing that liveliness otherwise it's a little slow to respond to your command that way but yeah on a day-to-day -day cruise it's gonna be all right the engine at higher rpms also tends to become slightly noisier and starts to leak a little bit of sound inside the cabin also but if you like the sound of it then you're gonna love this because it boy it roars sometimes when you put your foot down flat so it can do that as well and it builds up speed quite nicely very evenly as well and even the gear shifts are pretty crisp that way and not very clunky or anything now when you come to the fuel efficiency from this engine you sorry that was my lane key buses that keeps beeping every single time which is why i switch it off so the efficiency from this engine you will get anywhere between seven to seven and a half kilometers per liter inside the city while outside on a longer run you can get anywhere between eight to eight and a half kilometers per liter let me put this in the auto and the comfort mode so that's the realistic 
efficiency that you will get i feel like there has been an improvement in that as well because the previous generation was slightly lower in terms of the fuel efficiency it would deliver between six to six and a half to seven but now it's become much better it's much more smoother also when you are driving it now when you come to the four by four as i mentioned there's a transfer case but i cannot do any off-roading because i'm not allowed but i found a way to do a slight bit of off-roading without breaking any rules check this out So that was a lot of off-roading which we've done with the car and yeah it's 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 still a capable 4x4 which is what Jeep claims that this can do so I don't know maybe see the promos and see what it can do now when it comes to the suspensions they are on a comfortable side and there is slight bit of roll I find sometimes on the car and it's just that the car does feel a little bit top heavy yeah and there is still a bit of a roll that you will feel but nonetheless they are still capable there is an air suspension option but it's not available here yet because that will probably solve the rolling issue as well but it's not that much of a roll it's just slightly that you will notice especially with bigger cars but let me do a slalom and show you yeah that way it takes a little while to shift its weight from one end to the other but yeah you can still control it so there is a sudden swarm you are going to have pretty much good control of the car now when it comes to the steering it's actually pretty decent for a car this big now i've always said that you know cars like these big ones usually have a very lazy kind of steering setup but on this one it's pretty all right because it responds quite well to the 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 command from the steering and also it's got a good amount of feedback to it again it's a pretty heavy car so it's it's not going to be yeah immediately able to do the the same amount of the ability to respond like you would get from your sedans or other sporty cars but yes it still does the job quite well like it will turn in very well it's also left to see like how it responds in off-roading because that's where the steering matters a lot there's also a good amount of weight to it so so far the steering is quite all right i would say now when you come to the noise and the vibrations again that's also pretty much all right there's slight amount of tire noise at higher speed which i find but there's no wind whooshing or anything and engine especially if you are stressing it out then you might hear a little bit of that v6 rumble inside the cockpit as well now when you come to the vibrations nothing it's just good build quality right now so it's doing quite well now when you come to the brakes you get four disc brakes on this jeep grand cherokee l so let me show you the performance of that by doing a 100 to 0 emergency stop yeah the abs kicks in but there's no emergency stop signal but the thing with the brake pedal is that it's it's got that woody feeling it's like pressing against the wood it's, it's kind of pretty hard that way and the travel is very minimum like the moment you just press or just touch that brake pedal and it just starts the braking action so yeah that's the little bit that needs calibration because it's kind of pretty hard on a day-to-day -day basis if you want to use it and the travel is just barely like three millimeters i think or five millimeters that's about it and then all the braking action happens so yeah if that can be improved otherwise the disc performance the braking action yeah that's decent i mean that's pretty all right now when you come to the safety systems you get six airbags two for the front driver and the passenger two side airbags driver and the passenger curtain airbags which are mounted on the frames and there is also child isofix points in all the three seats in the second row there is also a 360 degree camera system and i really like that the output is very crisp and you can select the different views that you want like broader angle whatever angle you want to see you can do that as well even when you are towing you can see the 
the the different angles on the car like the front and the back and especially the Grand Cherokee is one of the best for towing if you have a lot of weight to tow around then this is the car that you better look at so in terms of the camera also you can even wash the front camera so there's a feature that has been given from the screen itself you can just press that button and then you can wash that front but not for the rear camera for some reason there's also abs there is also the blind spot warning system which has been given there's also the different uh, pedestrian warning the cyclist warning and all of that for the front and the back and there is also the lane keep assist but i find sometimes a little bit annoying because it keeps kind of forcing you into the lane even though you've signaled that you want to go to the right side but it would still vibrate and do all sort of things so i sometimes just switch it off because it's very intrusive very sometimes but yeah those are all your safety features which you get on this grand cherokee l limited edition now when you come to the pricing so the base price which is the altitude price starts at 204,900 dirhams while this limited plus edition comes in at 229,900 dirhams for this price i feel yes there is a lot of improvement there is a lot of tech that has been put now on this car this feels much more polished much more refined and much more up with the other competitors and up with the times it's also spacious by the way in terms of the cargo space because I'm, i think it's one of the top three for sure there's also a huge towing capacity that you get and even it's spacious on the inside yes there can be some improvements in terms of the quality that's been used somewhere on the interiors but otherwise the exterior now looks quite smooth and it's it's lost a bit of that ruggedness but i don't know i mean it's subjective you may like the looks you may not but personally i think it looks pretty good and it now even looks a little longer because it's slightly longer version because of that l size now so even that's to be considered which is why you get an extra space inside it's also pretty practical and yeah as i said it's also technologically advanced as well now so it's very nearly there with the the top players out there so and it's a pretty popular car out here in the uae so feel free to check this car out and yeah you may find this pretty interesting anyways that is pretty much it for this video give this video a thumbs up and thank you for watching this video and if you want to subscribe to my channel then you can click here and if you want to watch more videos then click here i shall see you in the next video bye bye take care and stay safe